she needed a way to kill something that couldn't be easily killed. There were several options. But now she sat with Mistress Yi of Shaolin and her companion Ip Kai of Wudang in a small but comfortable tea room decorated with spread open fans printed with images of the Great Wall and the Forbidden City and so on, and lanterns. And it was empty apart for them, and the old woman who seemed to run the place brought her a coffee, not tea, without being told. And so things were looking up, though not admittedly for Tom Thumb, and not for Milady's peace of mind either. I have seen this before. It is the emblem of the Grey Ghost Gang. They have not been seen for many. <sighs> Her eyes widened. She was looking past Milady. Milady knew something was wrong. She felt the window explode a split second before the glass burst. She ducked and glass fragments showered her, and she could feel a sudden pain in her cheek, a shard of glass cutting her. A burning fury rose inside her, and coupled with it was a wild, unconstrained joy. She was finally going to shoot someone. Uh, <gasps> the Great Ghost Gang! When Milady looked up, the gun was in her hands, and dark shapes were streaming into the room. She fired, and watched the first one drop to the floor, a flower of blood spreading on his chest. They were dressed in black, of course they were dressed in black, and she knew with absolute certainty that if she only looked, she'd find a grey tattoo on the man's arm. Mistress Yi leaped into the air. Milady had never seen someone move the way she had. She bounced off the wall and spun and kicked, and her foot connected with one of the attacker's heads and knocked him out flat. She landed, but it only lasted a fraction of a second, and she was airborne again, spinning, her legs catching two more of the attackers. And Ip Kai had joined her, moving like a ghost, appearing behind two more attackers. There was something in his hands, like tiny needles. Both went in simultaneously into the men's necks, and they both fell. Milady fired, and again, and watched another man fall. How many were there? Get out! She threw a metal star, lightning fast, and another man dropped down. The small tea room was fast filling up with the dead. The back door! We hold them! Later! She had a second gun strapped to her leg, and now it was in her hand, and both her hands were full and both her guns were loaded, and she fired, left, right, left, turning with each shot, moving forward to catch as many of them as she could. A kick connected with her legs and swept her down to the floor, and she roared. The guns forgotten as she found her feet and rushed her assailant, grabbing his head with her arms, and she twisted. There was a sickening sound. She reached for the peacemaker on the floor, the other gun lost and held it by the barrel and used it as a club and bashed a man's head in. Something cut her arm then, deeply. Ip Kai was flying through the air and his bare hands were weapons, but there were so many of them, so many more coming in to replace the fallen. Get out, damn it! And then Mistress Yi was there again, and somehow the small girl was dragging the much larger woman away from the fighting towards the back of the room. We hold them up! And threw her through the kitchen door. The desire to fight left her suddenly. She scrambled to her feet, noticing the kitchen was empty, the door to the back wide open, and went through the door fast. Behind, a dark alleyway that was very empty. Why would they be chasing her? She didn't have the key. A key. A key to what? None of it made any sense. She thought of what the girl, Mademoiselle L'Espanier, had told her. What she saw in the room at the end of the corridor, at the clockwork room. Shadows flickering on a wall... Light and shades, moving shapes, like a camera obscura. A projection. Not a key, but a what? And she thought, perhaps it was showing what is behind the door. She had to find the fat man, and she had to talk to Victor again, and to the council. But first, she needed a new gun.